Right, welcome back to the presentation of Tale of Tamari, where we are continuing with chapter 9 to chapter 12. Chapter 9, our setting is the border, Tamari's home, school, and childline office. So here's the plot summary. Aunt Loveness has a difficult journey because her passport has expired. Her emergency travel documents have a problem and the border officials are not patient with her. So Aunt Loveness, as we know, the aunt to Kuda and Tamari, is preparing to come to, to see Tamari and Kuda. But now she's having a difficult journey because her travel documents have expired and she's having a very hard time uh, to move to the country. So being Christmas time, buses were few and far apart. The coming of Aunt Ravness has changed a lot of things for the better as she brings clothes, food, letters from relations and Christmas gifts for the children. Mm -hmm. So after all these difficulties, she manages to come and um, see the children. So she has brought so many things, clothes, food, letters from the relations and Christmas gifts for the children. So they have got a relief at the end. She also cleans the house and arranges the furniture in a special way. And she makes sure that the children have enough food. Now she's doing it as a parent now, the real parent, the real mother, as mothers do. So she's there to do everything at home so that these two children can find comfort at last after so much suffering that they have gone through. She as well shuts up the lodgers and neighbors. Aunt Ravness helps Tamar to find a place in secondary school. She meets the headmaster who says that the school might help with a bursary. So we see that she has really changed everything for Tamari and Koda because she finds uh, her a new school where the girl can reign and potentially have a better future. They also visit the children officer, which would help and later buys school uniform, blazers, schools, books, stationery, and other necessities. So all these are courtesy of Aunt Loveness. Then Uncle Banda is not happy with Aunt Ravness because she refused to play customary rap games when they were young. She has come unexpectedly to take charge of everything. She chats up the neighbors and the lodgers. As we would expect, this one, much as him, he's him, Tamari's uncle, but he is not happy to see Tamari um, having a better life alongside the Koda because he, he now thinks that all the plans that he had to sell the house and to take control of everything has now fallen to Aunt Ravnitz's hands. So now he hates this one, not only because of that, but because during their uh, youth, Aunt Ravnitz refused to play um, some, some love games, some customary love games with him so that anger is still there inside him and she as well trots off to the children office and uncle banda is not sure how she would react when she hears his plans of selling the house so he's he's afraid of the law taking its course if the people uh, realizes what his evil plan is so aunt Ravnis is the one who is in all this, who is planning all this, and Uncle Banda is also worried that maybe he might face the law because of what he's planning to do. We go to themes in chapter 9. Our first theme is positive intervention on orphanage. 
So Aunt Ravni's intervention into the children's lives has changed everything for the better. Because um, as a parent, he has shown us some positive intervention on orphanage. Not only, we should not only leave this to the organizations, but we can also help as relatives, even as friends. So Aunt Ravnis is showing us a good example in this regard. From there, we go to character analysis, where we're going to analyze some of the characters that we, we have seen in this chapter. First is Aunt Ravnis. This one is determined and go get her. Why? Because she continues with journey despite hardships so that she can see the children and help them. So uh, we, uh, we saw that she met a lot of difficulties at the border because of her travel documents. But again, she pushed on until she reached uh, the children. So she is determined. Number two, she's a game changer. Why? Because her coming has changed the children for the better. So the children are able to see right at the end of the tunnel because of her. So we can describe her as a game changer, somebody who comes in and changes everything for the better. Then Kuda, this one is patient. Why? Because he's not envious of the good is happening as he knows that his time will come. As we see that Aunt Ravnis has found a school for Tamale, but Kuda doesn't react in a violent way because he knows that um, her sister should get things first before him because he's younger, so he's patient compared to many children that we see around. Onwards, we go to chapter 10. And here our setting is Tamari's home. So we're going to see events that happen at Tamari's home. Here's our plot summary. Tamari, Aunt Mbabanda complains of Uncle Banda's wayward behavior since he has not been home for a week. So this is Uncle Banda's wife. So she complains about this husband's behavior because he hasn't been home for a week. Let's see where he has gone. So whenever he comes to correct rent, he returns home after several nights. This makes Aunt Banda to cry, saying that it is the deceased house that has caused the change in her husband's behavior. So now we see that Uncle Banda's rent, the rent that she collects, rentals that she collects, he collects from the house, has driven him to wayward behavior because he's always spending several nights away from home because of the same. So Aunt Banda is not amused with that because she cries every time that happens. So she sees that it is the deceased house that has contributed to all that behavior change. Then she furthermore reveals that Uncle Banda does not mean any good for the house and she advises Aunt Ravnis to remain single since marriage is nothing but problems for many people. So we see that Aunt Banda now is, is not happy with marriage. She has given up uh, the ambition of being happy. So she also advises Aunt Ravnis never to get married because in marriage, as she has experienced it, is full of problems. As we see what Uncle Banda is doing to her. Then Aunt Ravnis disagrees and reveals that it's just that she has not met the right man. So this is the response that Aunt Ravnis gives that, yes, you're, you might be right, but now it might be happening that we, I haven't met the right man because we have seen so many marriages that are working very well. So Aunt Ravnis is trying to disagree with Aunt uh, Banda on the issue of marriage that is a waste of time. She says, no, it's not a waste of time, but it's all about meeting the right person. 
Then Aunt Banda advises Tamari to take time when she wants to marry. So she's full of advice. When Tamari hears this and reflects on what boys and men such as Mandra, Graver, and the customers have been doing to her, she's in a big doubt. So she's able also to reflect on several people whom she has met and whom she can analyze their behavior in relation to what Aunt Banda advises. On one hand, she thinks of nasty occasions like the boys who teased her when her dress got wet during her menstrual period. Mkoma Mandra who grabbed her on the door, she locked herself in the toilet, and two drunkards who said crude about her and grabbed her. So she's able to think of all these uh, men who have done bad things to her. And on the other hand, she thinks of the good occasions like when Mkoma Mandra smiles and lending money when in trouble and Clever's pity, protection and smiles towards her. So she's able to distinguish two kinds of men. These men here and these men here. So Mkoma Mandra who portrays two sides of himself as a kind man as well as somebody who wants to take advantage of her. As well as Clever who is showing pity and protection so she's trying to balance what Aunt uh, Banda says and what he, she has seen so far in terms of analyzing uh, men's behavior. From there, we go to themes in this chapter. And our first one is money and infidelity. So this is shown by Aunt Banda who holds that Uncle Banda's unfaithfulness is due to the money earned from the house. So Uncle Banda has changed his behavior because of money. They say, uh, give a man money and power and see what he's capable of. So yeah, we have seen that Uncle Banda has changed his behavior because he gets extra money that he can use um, for uh, paying prostitutes and the like and other women as well. So money has contributed to his infidelity. Then marriage as a theme as well. The chapter reveals that most people go into marriage as a solution to their problems. We have seen this in Aunt Banda's comments that marriage brings problems because she thinks at first that marriage is there to offer solutions to her problems but now she is disillusioned she she doesn't find what she expects in marriage number two on the same marriage aunt banda learns too late of the need to take time before going into marriage so sometimes it's, it's about time we, we 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 rush into marriage not knowing that what we are going to find there is not what we expect. So sometimes it's, it's good to take our time and wait for our time to come so that we find the right man as Aunt Ravenous is alluding to. Next is character analysis. Aunt Ravenous is sympathetic. She holds seats Aunt Banda's predicament and comforts her. So. She's there to provide comfort to Aunt Banda who complains about the abusive husband that uh, she is having. So she is sympathetic as a fellow woman in this case. Then Aunt Banda is sincere and honest. Why do we say this? Because she recounts all her problems as they are and confesses that her husband intends to do something and and godly with the house so she's able to reveal that sincere to reveal all the bad ambitions of her husband and at the same time she is honest about how she lives at the house she's able to to reveal the problems that she's facing so that's sincerity and honesty so she's honest and she's also sincere at the same time she's also thoughtful why she's able to draw lessons from her situations and advises Tamari accordingly. 
so she doesn't give Tamari a wrong advice. She gives her uh, the best advice that she can have based on her experience. So she's thoughtful. She thinks um, well of Tamari's future. That's why she's able to advise her based on how she has experienced marriage. From there we go to chapter 11. And our setting is Tamari's school. Here's our approach. Tamari is struggling with cross country because she feels she is about to faint and she needs something to lean on. So cross country is a competition where um, people run across a very large distance. So Tamari is participating in that at school. So now she's tired and she's about to faint. Let's see what follows. Clever joins Tamari and tells her to walk as he would not write her name. So remember this is a class monitor and he, he writes names of those offenders that are doing things contrary to the school's instructions. So now Tamari as she has stopped, she's supposed to be written down. Her name is supposed to be written down by Clever, but Clever doesn't do that. Why? Let's see. When some boys mock them, Tamari is strengthened and finishes the cross country. So they sit there, people try to mock them. Remember, Clever is the, the boy who refused to write Tamari's name when Tamari was read at school uh, in the first chapter. So they mock them, they sing a lot of songs about them, but the, Tamari is strengthened now and we, together with the Kuda, they finish the cross country race. And at the end of the race, Tamari sits down to chat with Clever, who promises to be a good friend. Remember, Tamari needs a lot of friends, so Clever is volunteering to be one of them. Then Linda Agi urges her not to get involved in any bad thing with boys, and Tamari promises Linda to be good. So after seeing this scene here, Tamari sitting down with Clever. Linda, as her best friend, comes in to age her or to warn her that she shouldn't go an extra mile, that this should only be friendship because they have promised each other that they should not engage in any premarital sex with the boys. So Tamari assures her that everything is going to be all right, that there is nothing going on between the two. It's a good friend, Linda, advises her friend not to engage in bad things. Themes. Our first theme is extracurricular activities. So most students have a negative attitude towards sports, clubs, and society as evidence from what Clever and Tamari say about sports. Yes, most of the students may agree with this statement here because most of these extracurricular activities are hated by students, especially when, the, when the, there's a lot of energy involved, like running, maybe even clubs. They have got so much negative attitudes towards them. So this has been also portrayed here, where Kuda and uh, no, Kreva and Tamari have got a lot of negative things about it this cross country which they have, they have to run a, a lot of distance, they have to faint on the way, they have to collapse, uh, things like those. So it's our theme about extracurricular activities and the, the attitude that students mostly have against these activities. Number two, we have got friendship and love affairs as our next theme. Now, in most African schools, there are rumors and gossip about marital affairs among boys and girls due to failure to differentiate friendship from love affairs, healthy from unhealthy relationship. Now, this theme is very common in, among teenagers nowadays, that whenever you see a boy and a girl together, the only thing that we think is that these 
are engaged in sexual relationship. And the same happens here, where uh, Tamara and Craver are seated somewhere, but the boys, most students think that they are engaged in a sexual relationship. And even Linda as well is concerned about the same, that they are engaged in uh, premarital affairs, because that's uh, their attitude generally, as it is our attitude in most African societies. So we can't differentiate between a normal friendship or a love affair whenever a boy and a girl are involved. That's our second thing. We go to character analysis. Our first character is Tamari, who is described as determined. Why? Because despite being dog tired, she manages to finish her course when Sam teased her. So that's determination from her. She's determined to finish the, uh, the race despite receiving uh, those chantings from the fellow learners. Number two, um, Linda, who is advisory and cautious. Why? Because when she senses that Tamari and Cleva's friendship may not be healthy, Linda reminds her of their promises to have nothing to do with boys. So she is cautious. At the same time, she is advisor. She is able to give um, concrete advice to her friend because she doesn't want her to go astray. So she is very cautious. Then Trevor, this one is sympathetic because she tells Tamari to walk and will not write down her name upon seeing that she is struggling with cross country. So she's very sympathetic, even though she's he's a class monitor, but he doesn't write uh, Tamari's name. Then friendly and amicable, he befriends Tamari politely and promises to be good. We go to chapter 12. So our setting here is Tamari's home the police station, courtroom, and prison. So all these places is where we are going to see um, the action taking place in this chapter. Now, the plot goes like this. Thugs attack Tamari's home. A brick crashes through the window and land near Kuda's head. A horse pipe is pushed through the crushed window and spreads water everywhere and a burning match is thrown through the window. So it's an attack. It's in the middle of the night and the, uh, all of a sudden a brick crashes through the window and land is near Kuda's head, missing his head of course. And a horse pipe is inserted through the window and the water is everywhere. Um, in the room. Then after that, there's a warning message. Next time, it will be paraffin. So it's this uttered outside. So it means they're saying that next time they will put paraffin inside the house and probably burn the house because paraffin is very flammable. And then when Aunt Ralphness asks who the thugs are, a voice simply responds that they know what they do. So presumably we can imagine where these people are coming from. Because um, we have seen that Uncle Banda is not raised with the coming of Aunt Loveness. So everybody in the house wakes up to the commotion and assemble at the sitting room. So they are at the sitting room trying to discuss what next after this attack. 
Then the police arrive three hours later after the, being called, they call the police, they sent someone to call the police and three hours later the police arrived, most staff had gone to man roadblock in anticipation of mass action to protest against rising food and fuel costs. So currently there's the, this development here where the country is facing uh, an acute shortage of fuel and also their rising food prices. So the police are very few, most of them are going to, to quell this situation and then a few police arrive at the scene where there is an attack. The ask of the suspect and Mdala Zuse gave Uncle Banda's name. That's expected because Uncle Banda is the one who has been on the forefront of abusing uh, these two children. So it's their prime suspect. Now at the police station, Uncle Banda has a lot going on in his mind, which include how the police had traced the incident to him, why he hired thugs and paid them before the dust settled. So now Uncle Banda has been arrested, he's at the police, he's being interrogated there, and now he's trying to reflect on how the incident had got out of hand, how uh, they have traced him um, to this end. So he's he's becoming to be worried. And he also regrets why he had been busy with his brother's house instead of keeping his job. The loss of his job when the bosses hear about this. So a lot of worries are coming in. He's regretting um, why he has done this, why he has paid uh, the bandits to go and ransack the, uh, the house. Again, at the same time, he's also worried what his wife will say upon hearing his, this news and what if they locked him up. So at first, he, he doesn't think about all these things. It is now that he's coming to think of these things after what he has done. Despite Aunt Loveness' spreadings, Uncle Banda is imprisoned. Later, Aunt Loveness, Tamari, Aunt Banda visit Uncle Banda in prison where they talk to him through a glass pane using a microphone. Now, Aunt Loveness uh, decided to pray with the police so that they should release him since he is a relative, but the police doesn't do that they make sure that the law uh, takes its course by imprisoning him. So one day they go there to visit Aunt Ravnes, Tamari, Aunt Ban, to visit him in prison so they talk through a microphone. Uncle Banda looked haggard or looked weak. His eyes had deep distant look. His cheeks were hollowed and his hands were bony. So this is a description of him in prison. You know, prison life can be hard because the food is not the same that you eat at home. So Uncle Banda has changed in his physical appearance because of the conditions that are there in prison. Uncle Banda appears to be suffering, but he talks a lot, asks of Tamari's schoolwork, Uda and Fatima, his daughter, about Rogers and how long Aunt Ravnes would be staying. So now Uncle Banda is a worried man because now he seems to be changing because he, it's now that he asks about Tamari's work, but, but all along he didn't care about it. And he asks about Kuda, about Fatima, his daughter. Now he's trying to turn into a good person. But he, we all know that he is pretending because all along he has been portraying his, his bad side towards the children. But now he's trying to show uh, his good part because he has been arrested. So he also asks about Rogers and how long Aunt Loveness will be staying. Obviously because he doesn't want this one to be in the country because she is there to disturb her plans. He looks longingly at Aunt Banda, who is a few months pregnant. So now 
his wallet. His wife is pregnant and he's in prison. What might follow next? Themes. There's a theme of ruthlessness. Why, when thugs attack Tamali's home, they do it cruelly, breaking the window and then getting a horse pipe into the house and then pouring water all over. That's cruelty. That's being ruthless. It's ruthlessness that is being portrayed here as a theme uh, by these uh, thugs. Well, that's it. Next, it will be chapter four, and that's going to be our final chapter. Thank you very much. This mutai and how we are no funa funa mapunziro, muzakala wo tu mi duamo yuan wons. That is mutunzira, and to azingo kutuman. Ajala karime, ajala kuchwe manyasi, ajala katende yanti, dipo and wo punzira and wo tu mans of one bee. Then that is mutunzira, school of week ran aba. Mukala, Otumidwa.